Good evening, facilitators. Good evening, Father's Heart. Good evening, South Africa. Welcome to the school. Hello, Francois, Peter, uh, Marine. I can see some of you. Barbara, Hester, Danny, and Marta. Hello, Danny. I'm cool to see your face somewhere again. We trust that you are fine. Brian, Janet, Elena, Marlene, uh, Neil. Welcome to the school. It's an absolute privilege serving you tonight. And I think we had, an, a, had a fantastic teaching by Pastor Connie. Um, tonight and thank you Valerie for allowing the people into the room. I think we had a fantastic uh, message from Pastor Connie tonight or the teaching that we had tonight um, was a fantastic teaching but we are busy with facilitator training so uh, tonight we we are busy with lesson number 36 and uh, tonight's lesson are titled Be Kind to One Another. Tonight's lesson Be Kind to One Another and and I want you to to know and understand that home fellowship is a place for us to practice that. It's a place for us to practice just that. But let's pray and bless this meeting. Lord, we just come and say thank you that we can be together like this tonight. Thank you for the wisdom in your word, but thank you for your spirit in our heart. Lord, help us, assist us through your spirit, that that word will not just be in our mind, but that word will will go to our heart and our, that word will sink into our spirit so that we can actually give utterance to it in your love. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, tonight we would like to talk about be, be kind to one another. And home fellowship is exactly that place where you have the space, the time to grow up in your kindness, to grow up in how to talk, how to treat other people. The home fellowship is a place where we are safe. And um, the key is that um, we should allow the other people in the home fellowship because it's always about the other people. No, for most people, it's always about themselves. Um, that's just human nature. It's first about yourself and then maybe something will, will come that will impact other people, or maybe we will give some thought to other people. But home fellowship is different because it is a place where you and I have the time, where people come and spend their energy, where people come and contribute, where we have time to actually learn, to see how other people carry themselves, to see how other people commit um, to the word, and to see how other people commit and uh, talk to one another. And it's important for you and I to know that home fellowship is a place where we are safe. It's a place where we have the opportunity to grow in who I am. I have the opportunity to grow who I am in the spirit. I have the opportunity to grow who I am in my natural man through the input of the spirit. And it's important that we understand home fellowship to be part of that. And that's part of the blessing of being a home fellowship. I've changed a lot in my life because of the influence of people in home fellowship, because of the home fellowship collectively, the contribution by every individual. And um, the key is, if I open myself to have a teachable spirit, I will benefit from the input from other people. But I have a scripture that is a scripture out of tonight's teaching that I would like to touch on first before we go in, into tonight's word. And that is Hebrew 11 verse 6. But without faith, without faith, it's about faith. In our own fellowship, we have a place where I'm safe to come and build my faith, to come and add to my, to my level of faith, to come and, and, um, and, and collectively work on each other's faith. And it's important that we in the home fellowship spend time with regard to regards to developing the faith of every person in the home fellowship and not just the facilitator or the person that normally takes over. The key is to make sure that every person is safe to come and just grow in their faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. God, our father, that's why we do everything. That's why I wake up in the morning. That's why I go to bed at night. Because I want to, to um, please my father. I want to have a life and a life in abundance. And uh, we just heard that again in the teaching tonight. But God has 
has a heart for us to live in abundance, to live a life that is full, a life that's got impact. But faith is the thing that helps us to achieve that. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. We must believe that he is. But we have to give each other the opportunity to grow in the belief that he is. We have to give each other in the home fellowship. We have to give each other the opportunity to grow our faith. That is home fellowship. That's the essence of home fellowship. Yes, we grow in the word as well. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. But we have to grow in faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And we have to diligently seek the Father. We have to diligently seek the Father. But what better place is it than to allow my fellow brothers and sisters in the home fellowship the space, the freedom, the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to to maybe say something that's not 100% in line with the word, but allow them the freedom to say that so that they can learn from that, not because we jump on them, because we kindly assist and help and show them that they can grow. And the key is to believe, to have faith in God. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. So that means in a home fellowship, with us discussing the word, with us talking about the word, with us allowing every person to contribute their understanding with regards to a specific teaching, a specific word. In that, we allow people to hear the word. In that, we give people the opportunity to come and contribute. We give people the opportunity to actually discuss and have the freedom to discuss the word. So that when they're in a public space, when they're at work, when they're with family, when they're at the bri, when they're at wherever, they have done it in a place before where they are safe. So that they will have the boldness to step out and to start a conversation, to say something. And brothers, sisters, beloved, this is so important. As a home fellowship facilitator, I need to understand that because that is Sorry, the gift of our home fellowship. That is the gift of our home fellowship. And um, when we go look at home fellowship, it's important that we understand if we, my apology, I got to the wrong slide. If we go to home fellowship, um, if we go look at home fellowship, it's important that we understand that people need to be able to come and use words. We need to allow people to use their words, your words. Your word as the facilitator, but your word for every person in the, in the home fellowship. Your words. The words that you use. The words that you utter. And it's important that we have a place where people are safe to come and grow. And not every person that's going to get into your home fellowship is going to be as, as saintly and as saved as you are. People need to grow, but they need a space to grow because the world is not tolerating Mistakes. The world is not tolerating or not providing people the space to grow in who they are, to grow in the word, to grow in their faith. And therefore, there's home fellowship. And unfortunately, in home fellowships, us who are very holy and who's been saved, born saved and never made a mistake, we sometimes look down at other people getting into the home fellowship. And they, they see that, they experience it, they understand it, they feel it. And we should make sure that a home fellowship is a place where I have to check my words, but I need to know that I'm safe. It is a place where if I make a mistake, no one will come down to me on me like a ton of bricks, but we will discuss it. We will have a discussion around it and uh, we will grow from it. And together we will grow. But the first thing is your words. So the first thing that we need to look at in our own fellowship and give people the opportunity is there is your words, every person individual words, but then is their words. So first is your word, my word, my word, your word, every individual's word, but then it's collective, their word. 
the word of the people, the words that the people use in the home fellowship. And it's important that we allow the home fellowship to grow. And as we grow in faith, and remember, we have different levels of faith because every one of us has got a measure of faith. Every one of us has got a level of faith, but we operate at a different level. But we need to allow the home fellowship people to grow their faith as we've just read um, the scripture before we've gone onto um, the slide. The key is the home fellowship should be a place where it is safe for fellow believers to grow in their faith. And we should make sure that the words that I as an individual use, but the collective word of everyone in the home fellowship guides us towards building our faith guides us towards becoming better at understanding and interpreting the word so that it builds our faith. Because it's important that we build our faith if we want to collectively make a difference. And then it's the word. So it's my word or your word, an individual's word. Then it's their words, the words of the group collectively. But then it's ultimately the word. Now, if I talk about the word, who do I talk about? Jesus Christ. The word. Jesus Christ is the word. He is the bread of life. He's the lamb. He's our savior. But he's the word. And Jesus Christ is important. And we should allow the word to grow in the home fellowship. And that's why we do a teaching on our home fellowship every week. That's why we have a teaching. That's why we have a teaching. And we've just. Um, Watch the video of the teaching from Pastor Connie. So we just gone through the teaching of Pastor Connie. And it's important that you and I understand in the home fellowship where it fits in. Now, I have said this a few times before that we have the privilege of having an app. And um, on the app, we have, uh, we have, sorry, I'm just opening my cell phone here because I want to go to the app and, and, and just say something about this. It's imperative that we understand our resources. And um, remember, Dr. Frost has said that um, he created the WhatsApp group with everyone that's um, on our system listed as someone that's willing to uh, facilitate the home fellowship. And um, a lot of you have um, uh, made known that you are willing to do a home fellowship. Every person on that WhatsApp group that said something, I made a note in the system in the background. For those who said they want to facilitate the home fellowship, the home fellowship is created on our system. And the app will soon go live with the home fellowships added to it. So if this is the app, uh, they, um, on, on, the, on the app, we have um, the Dr. Arthur Frost teachings app. Now, if I go into the app, I purely go to video or audio, so you can go to video or audio. I'm going to go to video for this moment. The key is I go to category and um, I go to facilitate this training. There you will see facilitate this training is Afrikaans, church service, daily communion, English service, father's heart announcement, facilitate the training. So there we have facilitate the training, and that is who we are. We are the facilitators. Now, it's important that we just need to understand how to facilitate this home fellowship where the word fits in. Because people ask me continually, um, but how do we use the word? If I start a home fellowship, where do I start? Which number um, uh, teaching do I start at? And I'm, I'm glad when people ask because that means there's new people entering into this opportunity. Now, I want to just show you um, on, on this app, if I, I'm just going to, um, highlight the first one. If you look on that one that I highlighted there, it was last week's teaching, and it says lesson number 35. Now, tonight I, sh I told you we have lesson number 36. So I'm just going to go out of the app because I want to page down on the app, but I don't want to page with you on the screen because um, it's not um, kind to every um, person. Some people are sensitive to that. So I'm just kind of uh, just going. Um, to lesson number one on the app. So if you go to lesson number one, so all I've done is I've scrolled down on the app and you will see there's even a line put in there for you. They, the developers has put a line in there for us. So if you scroll down, there's a line. Can you see that there's a blue line? And that line is at lesson number one. 
because prior to that, we had teachings in home fellowship while we were still busy developing um, home fellowship, while we were still busy getting um, our act together with what the, the home fellowship should look like, what format that we're going to create. In the process, we had teachings and we had 38 teachings. But then we started with lesson number one. And all we ask you as the facilitator is to go and revisit yourself, the facilitator, not the people in your home fellowship, the facilitator, to go revisit lesson number one. So if you're new, if you're not sure what you, if you're doing it correctly, if you're not sure what the program is, just go watch lesson number one, lesson number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So lesson number five, six, seven, and eight is about the meeting, showing you everything about the meeting. But lesson number four is the important one, the word that we're talking about tonight. Tonight we talk about the word. So tonight is about lesson number four. Lesson number four. So if you're not sure what the word is that we should need in, should use in the home fellowship, please just go watch those teachings because it will give you exactly the program. It will give you the flow of the home fellowship. It will tell you exactly what the home fellowship is about. The essence of home fellowship was captured in those first eight sessions, lessons. The, the balance, the other lessons, I just build on that on a weekly basis. I add to that and I build on that. Now, if we go to the word uh, and, and tonight, re remember, let me say this before I go to the slide, the scripture that I want to read to you. It's important that we understand we want to be one in spirit as Father's Heart Digital Church, as the members of the church, because we have facilitators who facilitate the, the process um, of the home fellowship according to our, our model, um, who are where the facilitator is a member of Father's Heart Digital Church. And those are Father's Heart Digital Church home fellowships. But then we have national fel home fellowships, and uh, those are for people who are members of other churches, but they still use our model. And I have various names on here, and I don't want to say a name now to, to just uh, um, say someone's name because then I'm, I'm going to be not kind to those the others. But the key is I know of various of you on the school who are a facilitator using our, our program and our process, but you are not a member of Father's Heart Digital Church. That means you have a home fellowship and it's just called the National Home Fellowship. And you are most welcome, most assuredly. But the key is we want to be one in spirit. And for us to start getting that going as a ministry, getting that going for our nation, remember our vision, and I don't want to talk about the vision tonight. Um, our vision is to change the spiritual atmosphere over our nation. And if you just go see in the, in the press what is happening in China at the moment, I mean, God told, told us through Dr. Frost a year ago that God will keep our enemies busy for, for four years, four to five years. And uh, that's exactly what we see. China is being keeping bu uh, kept busy with all kinds of funny things at the moment. And uh, we exactly see this. We see that prophetic word happening, playing out in the news, in the world. I mean, it's, it's just, um, it's amazing. That's why we need to grow our faith. But let me come back. So the key is, we want to give you the teachings. We want to give you the boldest so that you can grow in the word and can grow in faith because the word will get you to grow in faith so that we can make the difference. And um, uh, in the home fellowship, we do this teaching every Thursday evening. So every Thursday evening, we do the teaching and the teachings are on the app as well. If you go to the app and you just scroll a little further down, um, you can go to the... Um, Home Fellowship Teachings, and you can go and catch up on every teaching there that's been done up until the one that's done tonight in Memory Serves Me Right was number 84. And um, the key is we have the library. You can either go watch them on the, on the app or on YouTube. Um, and the key is we make it as simple as possible for you. But if you start a home fellowship, where do you start? I'm glad you asked. You start with the next week's Thursday teaching. So when you start a home fellowship the first evening, maybe you don't do a topic. Maybe you just 
talk to the people, get the people to know each other. If you have one or two uh, people, uh, persons in the room, my wife and I, we um, prepared, I prepared a word for the home fellowship when we started in the 90s. And um, it was just me and her and the two dogs. But I prepared a word. And um, the next week I prepared a word. And the third week, people started joining us. And I had word prepared for people joining us. But now it's easy. It's simple because we give you the word. It is available. The key is not to go and duplicate the word in the home fellowship, but purely to discuss it. You as the facilitator, watch this teaching that Dr. Uh, Pastor Connie has just done. Um, for example, you watch the teaching, you make notes, you, you take three or four um, key elements from that teaching for you as a person, three or four key elements. And in the home fellowship, you will, when you get to the word, just introduce that to the people and start asking questions. Before the time when you prepare, get three or four or five questions that you note down. That will be questions that will get people to go into deeper into this, this um, topic. And it's leading questions. It's questions that will help and assist them to get into this topic. So a leading question, just ask someone a question that they have to answer. It's not a close question. It's not what, where, when, and why, but a question that asks them something or understanding into that topic for people to discuss that topic. And as you start as a facilitator, it's difficult to get people talking. It's difficult in the first few times to get the people talking. It's just how it is. It's the dynamic of a new group of people. The quicker I can get them to relax, the quicker I can get them to be safe, the quicker I can stimulate the conversation, the quicker they will start talking and adding something when they say they're safe. But we start with a lesson that is the next week's lesson. So if you start your home fellowship next week, and the lesson will be tonight's lesson that we've done. So the whole week, every home fellowship, doesn't matter which day the, the home fellowship is, we use this word. Why? Because we're busy getting the nation to be one in spirit as well. And on that, I have a, a, a scripture that I would like to read to you. And it's Ephesians 4, verse 29 to 30. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And this is so such an important word for our own fellowship. We have to help and grow the people into edifying adding an edification, edification to imparting into the group the euros to build their grace. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now continue verse 31, 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And a home fellowship is the place where people can get rid of all these funny things that's attached to them in the spirit on a regular basis at their place of work, in some families, in the relationships that they carry. And it's important that the home fellowship is the place where people can get rid of that so that it's not the word that's fester and stay in them when they're outside, when they're in their, in their place of work, when they're in their community, in their family. Verse 32. And here's the, the key verse. And I would like you as a facilitator to just note down Ephesians 4, verse 32. It's a key word for us in home fellowship. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as, Christ, as God in Christ forgave you. We have to be kind to one another in the, in the home fellowship. Unfortunately, it's not always the case. There are times when people, I don't like that person. I take offense to something they say. I take offense to something they do. I take offense to what they think. Well, that won't allow that person to grow in their faith, to grow in the word, to grow in the spirit, to grow, to be able to have impact. I don't want to have a legacy in this world. I'm not doing anything that I do to have a legacy. When I check out of this world, for me being here, is to honor God. It's pure. It's about Jesus. But when I check out here, I don't want a legacy. I want people to be pointed to Jesus. 
And that's why verse 32 is so important. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. People will say stuff, and that's why I started with your word, your words, their words. We need to make sure that we get into the word and not into people's words. People's words should not affect us. When people say stupid things, I hear so many times Christians, mature Christians that I think are mature, they understand the word. They understand the word. They, they're able to converse. They understand the word. They understand grace. But they don't have grace for someone else. They don't have grace for something that happened at church. I'm offended because the church has done this. The church has said that. Now I cross with God. Now I have nothing to do with God because the church has said this. Someone has said this. Someone has done this. And it's 100% against who we are as believers. It's 100% against the word that we should have in us. I cannot be a Christian and continue this. And as a facilitator, it's important that we check the words. And if we say something that someone in the, in the home fellowship takes up differently than what you meant because of your peculiar sense of humor, and um, I'm the guilty party, that's why I can say that. I sometimes say things that people take up differently from what I meant. I meant it for good. They take it up not to be as kind because of my sense of humor that they don't understand. And um, then I cannot say, but you did not understand my sense of humor. I need to say, I'm sorry. I need to correct it. I need to make sure that I learn from that and not to do that again. I need to change. I can never, ever say it's because Francois didn't understand my sense of humor. I need to go and change that for next time and make sure that I will never get to that same place. We cannot allow people in the home fellowship to offend one another, to use words, and then for them to, to now get against the, against the home fellowship, against being there. People need to understand this. But we as the facilitator, you, I as the facilitator, that's the most difficult part of being a facilitator. Getting the people to be able to communicate with one another, to accept the other person for who they are. I'm not responsible for the other person. I'm responsible to give them a space to get into the word and to give them the space to learn, to study the word, to experience the grace of God so that they can change over time into who God wants them to be, not I, not me. And for us sometimes in home fellowship, it's just too much about who we think it should be. So it's important that we, that we look at the home fellowship and the people in the home fellowship and the words being used in the home fellowship. And please, I will encourage you to go look at Ephesians 4, verse 32, and go meditate on that and just go and, and help. I see that uh, Marine say in the chat box that um, most people don't know what the lesson is about. It's cool, Marine. All you do is you take three points, you take three salient points out of the teaching, just give them those three salient points out of the teaching, and then make conversation. Create for yourself. Go sit and pray and get five questions about that topic. It's not questions pointing at the fact here in front of just this things that that will get people to talk about this topic and um, just stimulate conversation about the topic. Um, the key is the facilitator should not be the one doing a presentation. It is we should get the people to discuss, to learn. Otherwise, they will not get the boldness to at the water cooler at work to bring up the word, to talk, to talk about the word. We need to encourage and help and assist one another to get into the word to help and assist one another to understand the word, to help and assist one another to have the freedom to think that I am allowed to share the word with someone else. I don't always have to think it's the pastor's job. I don't always have to think I'm not good enough. I should think because of Christ in me, Christ in me, my hope of glory, Christ in me, that love, 
that tender not, kindness to one another, that tender heart, tender heartedness, um, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And if we can create that in home fellowship, we will change this nation one person at a time. One person at a time. Lord, I just come and say thank you for the privilege that we can get together as facilitators. Lord, people that put up their hand to say, Lord, help me. I want to be tender-hearted. I want to be kind to people. I want to allow people the freedom to come and learn, to come and discuss your word, to grow their faith. Lord, help us that we will get people to grow their faith so that we will make a difference. Lord, through that, we will be able to change the spiritual atmosphere and achieve a changed nation for you, Lord. We thank you for that. I bless every person and the sound of my voice, whether they listen to this live or as a recording. Bless them with a kind heart, with tenderness, forgiving one another, spreading the word, being the love of Christ. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a privilege serving you. I really appreciate you and to thank you for making a difference where you are. Go invite one more couple, one more couple. Go invite a person to your next meeting. Just go invite, have the boldness. Go and invite one more person for next time. I bless you all. Have a good one. Bye-bye.